No, it's not because Dantar made it, and I'm and I'm gonna no, go. But that, you have to rebut something that was said. This in is this my section. time. This is my time right now. Can you please put a leash on him? Thank you. Um, it's certainly so, not a wait, third. Wait, so Councilor, wait a minute. I I have the floor, so okay. please. And Council President, if there's a way you can control the gentleman you have there, please. But no, that's fine. I mean, when you stop Christo, and it's okay. I wish Christo. Point of order. Here. Let's please conduct. Uh, business. Thank you. Thank you. When Jersey Watcher started going to the public meetings in Middlesex County, New Jersey, his right to speak was immediately being violated. This forced Jersey Watcher to learn more about his rights. The thing about these public meetings is there really is no one to challenge these politicians when they screw up and cost the taxpayers thousands, if not millions of dollars. Let's use, for instance, Joe Coyle, the last council president who spent a tremendous amount of money on flowers in order to beautify the downtown area, only to have a bunch of dead flowers and pissed off taxpayers. Joe the Flores Coyle is no longer the council president. There's a new puppet filling that seat. His name is John H. Pointer, and he just looks like a puppet for the Raynon, Coughlin, and Mincello law firm. These are the city attorneys who are also the city attorneys for at least seven neighboring towns or cities. When Louis N. Raynon gets asked by the councilman Richard Brescher why there are redactions on the legal bills sent to the city by the firm, Raynon's nose turns red as he begins to fumble his words and turns to the council puppet, uh, excuse me, president, and looks for assistance or an excuse. There's so much to decipher what's happening here in this video, so let's get right to it. We'll pause for comments. And you guys, don't forget to go subscribe to Jersey Watcher's channel. This guy will be back posting soon enough, and you're not going to want to miss his videos. All right, folks, let's get right to it. Are you ready? And my next one is to the attorney. Um, I know that I've struggled to try and get your, your legal bills, and, and I did. <laughs> it looks like I, I received something on Area 51 with all the redactions. Um, then I'm not sure that, uh, you know, a sitting councilman who's supposed to approve this bill can approve the redactions. I did spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out maybe what you redacted because I had asked for a copy of your privilege log, which would be a log of, you know, everything that would, you would redact from me. Um, uh, that way I can get legal advice to see whether that was acceptable or not. But I didn't receive that. And that's been well over a week to give me the privilege log. I mean, you would need it to make it. So it also almost seems like the law firm is being obstructionist in this case. But I'll tell you some of the things that don't make any sense. Like in here, there are references to a prepared ordinance, and then it's blanked out. So like how you're doing an ordinance, you're doing an ordinance for us, but then you won't tell me what the ordinance was about. So I, I don't know what happened. I don't think somebody actually looked at this. But how long it, would it take your firm to actually get me this privilege log that I'm asking for? Well, the, the answer is, is for us to go through what, I don't know what you probably have, 500 pages of bills. It would probably take somewhere between 20 and 30 hours of attorney time. Um, honestly, Councilman, this, these were given to you as a courtesy. They weren't asked by the council in in whole, and I didn't feel comfortable authorizing that kind of, you know, three to six thousand dollars in legal fees for this. As I've indicated to you before, just like you and I have privilege, and the and the council president and I have privilege when we speak, so does the administration. And I, I and I've tried to explain that, I guess, on a, on a number of occasions. Uh, I'm always free to answer questions to you, but I think that before I would go and spend that much money on legal fees, I would need the, some direction from either the administration from, or from the council president, and he and I have spoken about this before. It's just very unusual. It's the first time in my career I've ever seen an, a, a council member ask for a privilege log. That's typically something that goes with an OPRA request, and this wasn't an OPRA request. Okay, now I, I'd like to just comment and tell you that I have yet to have a legal firm on the Board of Education or on this dais ever blank out anything, never mind 
a third of of everything that I'm giving just well, about. Well, it's, it's certainly so, not a wait, third. Wait, so Council, that's not wait fair. a minute. I, I have the floor, so okay. please. And Council President, if there's a way you can control the gentleman you have there, please. But, no, that's fine. I mean, when you stop Christo and it's okay. I wish Christo Point of was order. Here. Let's please conduct uh, business. Thank you. Thank you. So my, my question is, you're telling me that I, I can't have it. I mean, I'm just asking you because I will tell you this. I will take this to the Supreme Court for you, okay? I just don't want to cause the taxpayers to pay because you feel something. When other attorneys, North Gray's firm released everything to me. The school board released everything to me. Jonathan Bush's firm released everything to me. It's only your firm, sir. So either you're going to release it to me and you're going to say that, or you're not. Because your, priv your privilege log, you have deleted items here. When you delete them, you're supposed to keep the log. So now you're telling me it's going to be extra work because you didn't put the log together as to what you were redacting to begin with. So I almost think like you're setting us up. You had somebody that did some work, but they did it half. And, and now, now our residents are going to have to pay is what you're telling me. So is it something that you're going to do or you're not? And then I'll hire an attorney. We will go to court. I will not settle. And whatever happens, happens. The answer is, is cre you're asking us to create a log. That's different than asking us to redact documents, which is what we did. And so that, that it, I just told you what, it, what the cost would be to do that. And um, I, once again, I wasn't authorized by the administration or the council to do that. And we gave them to you as a courtesy. I, and you and I have had this conversation before about the way the privilege applies. It applies to you just like it applies to the mayor. And and the administration, I'm, I'm not really, I don't really have much else to say on the subject than that. Council President, you and I had a conversation about this also. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or that you would like to proceed with? No, I'll we'll get a letter from my attorney. Thank you. Councilman Coyle. Thank you, Council President. Um, I just want to first uh, thank the mayor and the administration uh, for listening to the residents of the Clara Barton section. I want to thank this council uh, for showing up at different meetings in protest of closing our library in the Clara Barton section. I think this council and I think the residents in Clara Barton and the residents of Edison certainly understand the need uh, for having a special needs center, a school, uh, and it would be one of the first here in Edison, uh, ran by the township, and that certainly is something I believe all of us want to see someday. Uh, however, in a residential area, a, a small neighborhood, it just didn't work. And I'm glad the mayor came personally to listen to the residents. And um, I think they found comfort in him backing out of this and moving forward with looking at other locations. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for standing up for what just was right and not making change. Although the library may not be used every day, and, but it was their safe place. It was their backup for many reasons. And I think it just worked out great. And I wanna just thank each and every one of you for supporting that. Um, I also just wanna to mention too, I, I don't have any issues with the bills that Mr. Brescher is discussing right now. And I think perhaps in the first round of receiving these bills, uh, they were redacted, but I, um, Later, I'm sure if it's something he needs. I, I've looked through that pile. I think a lot, it's not that much redacted, but I do understand your, your issue. It's. Are you kidding me, Joe? Okay. Well, it's 20% 20, 20 is redacted. But uh, I think the Renault and Coughlin firm is, is, is a great firm. I think they represent several municipalities. I haven't heard of any other councilman that was disappointed in their work. Or, or any residents, but this has been a 30-year stunt I've watched from here at the podium, people questioning the work of a law firm appointed by the mayor. So it's just, it's typical politics during a political year. So that's what I call it. And I, I do appreciate Mr. Brescher's work and what he does. He, he works hard for certain things. So let me get this straight. You have Council President Poindexter, uh, excuse me, Pointer, calling a point of order on Brescher but let's Joe the florist go on about how great the mayor Sam Joshi is and the great work the law firm does and basically propagates that this administration should go on without checks and balances. 
Maybe the corruption goes deeper than we could have possibly imagined, folks. I smell misappropriation of funds going on and a cover-up by those entrusted by the people. There's a reason these council meetings should be examined by the people and not allow these mafia-like figures to do as they will. Thank God for Jersey Watcher and those of you who are going to these public meetings and asking questions. Keep watching, folks. And this is his opinion, but in my opinion, I, th I think they're a great firm, and I think Mr. Rodon does a great job for us. We're lucky to have him, and thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Uh, just as a general courtesy, um, we are not to question as to the motives as to what is brought about. Council members are willing and able to make all the comments that they see fit, but let's uh, try to stay away from the insinuating what motives may or may not be. Thank you. Krista? Well, I wrote down alias like a pen name. Um, I, okay, am, am I? Uh, I? I will request name and address. Okay, um, when I come up during my rebuttal, I'm gonna address the constitutionality argument of the name and address and wh why it is illegal and why you can- That would be an improper rebuttal, sir. No, it's not because Don Tarr made it, and I'm and I'm going to no, go. But that, you have to rebut something that was said. This in is this my section. time. This is my time right now. Can you please put a leash on him? Thank you. Um, I certainly nice do not like the treatment that Councilman Brescher got the last time he was here. Maybe that's not why he's here today. Could it be we're creating a hostile work environment for council members? You were quick to shut him down with your gavel when it was his time to speak. He said nothing wrong. And even your argument, he made no insinuations of anything. Um, yet Councilman Joe Coyle, he was allowed, he was allowed to insinuate Councilman Brescher's legit concerns with some kind of attack orchestrated for campaign season. Why didn't you stop uh, Councilman Coyle? Under your very same logic, you should have stopped him, correct? So we pick and choose? Okay, point made. Your law firm, the Coughlin Law Firm, Craig Coughlin Law Firm, he's going to run for governor. And now the public knows that Craig Coughlin Law Firm, who's running for governor, his law firm does not want to give records not only to council members, but also members of the public themselves. And I can prove it, and I will prove it. As when I came up here earlier, you have members of the public heckling me and whatnot. I'd like to add, when, I, when they come up here, I encourage them to come up here, say whatever they want. But if I were to heckle them, you'd hit your gavel and order police to surround me and throw me out. Um, it's a shame that someone who calls himself a teacher doesn't know the constitutionality, that there, he, he claims there's no constitutional argument. The Fourth Amendment, he can read it. It's the Fourth Amendment. It's been the same since he was a kid. Um, state of New Jersey versus Camillo, you're not allowed to ask for somebody's name and address unless they committed a crime, and only police can do that. Daniel's law, the Daniel's law says a police officer, a prosecutor, judge, and their immediate family cannot, uh, you cannot force them to give their name and address. And then when it gets rebroadcasted on Edison TV, the town can now get criminal uh, uh, lawsuit and also a civil lawsuit. Um, the Open Public Meetings Act and Sunshine Law says when it's the public's time to speak, let them speak. You guys might, how much time do I have left? Three minutes. Three minutes. You guys might have the argument that you believe it's reasonable. Um, it's not reasonable. There, there, there's a thing, you can create reasonable policy. But it also says somewhere else it's not reasonable to violate civil rights. So no, you can't do that. Um, but yet again, this is the last time I'm going to explain it too. Because this is two years in a row, they're told, told the same thing over and over. It's like zombies. It's like trying to tell a zombie how to teach them something. Um, yeah, I certainly don't have to give my name and address. And if a police officer and their family come up here and you say name and address and you now they give their name and address, and it gets rebroadcasted. Are you ready for the criminal and civil lawsuit that's going to hit this township? Are you aware of Daniel's law, sir? The laws keep changing every day. Are you up to date on the laws? 
attorney, are you up to date on the laws? And if you are, why, why do you insist on violating the public's Fourth Amendment rights to the point where it's criminal and you, and you can face a lawsuit? You're forcing police officers uh, to give their names and addresses, their immediate family members to give their names and addresses. Um, why are you violating Daniel's law? Do you, can you answer that for me? No. Do you think you're above the law? Does he think he's above the law because he has a title council president? I don't care what he thinks he is. There's still the law. As long as I'm following the law when I come in here, he cannot order me out because he, does, he doesn't like me. That's, that's how it works, correct? How much time do I have left? Two minutes. Two minutes. So, and I will come up here and I'll give my rebuttal. I'm going to uh, rebut the whole statement Donald Tarr made. Um, I find it abhorrent that this lawyer, that this lawyer had to cut me off on my public speaking time and he can speak for whatever you want to tell me that he wasn't going to give me a rebuttal time. Your you're not going to get a rebuttal time. Your, your, your job, was made put, put a leash during, on him. Your job is to give the uh, council during legal comments advice. On resolutions. His job that is, is not, not to a interrupt uh, members of the public. Point of order, point of order. Point of order to me or to him? To you, sir. Right now, when you were raising your voice, which unlawful, is a, unlawful point of order, absolutely not. I was. I'm allowed I to had to talk over order. him because he was talking over me. So you can't use that excuse that I was raising my voice. Absolutely disgusting. Um, I, I mean, it's over one year, over one year, and the same thing over and over and over again. Are you going to respect people's Fourth Amendment and First Amendment rights? Do you think you can do that? You took an oath. When, when you were elected, you took an oath. You stood up here and took an oath and said that you would do exactly that. Why are you violating Council your Council President, oath? the speaker's time is allowed. That means you have no integrity. Please sit down, sir. And you have sit no Sit down, integrity. please. I'm going to sit down. Just for a point of clarification, there were two points of order that I called on Mondays, uh, Monday night. One was towards Councilman Brescia, when I felt that the uh, comments were starting to get a little out of hand from the topic that was being addressed. And I also called a point of order on Councilman Coyle when he had made that mention. Uh, I meant to make a statement prior just to give guidelines in regards to the public speaking portion. Uh, in regards to the rebuttal, a rebuttal means you're refuting the comment made by another member of the public on the same issue which you originally spoke on. So I just want to make sure that's clear. If you spoke on an issue here during the public uh, oral petitions and remarks, then you can, it has to be regarding something that you originally brought up and a counterpoint was brought up afterwards. Uh, Mr. Sweeney? Rich Sweeney, Sutton Lane, Edison, 313. Um, it's not a rebuttal. I can, can say it, it's something I left out when I was up here the first time. I, I have to, I have. It, it has I would, to do with Officer Samino. Uh, I, I would love to, but in, to if you fair, love to. To you be know, fair to. Four letter word, I'm agreeing with you. To, to be fair to all of the residents, I had to make sure that the. All right, can I just, I'll just say are, and leave. Thank you, Samino, for stopping the tractor trailers from coming down Sutton's Lane. Hang on there, Mr. Sweeney. Pump your brakes, pump your brakes. Before you go on blindly brown nosing on these uh, political parasites, keep in mind that they don't care about you. They care about the contracts, they care about the friends they make along the way. They don't care about the average Joe, they want your money. They want a dumbed down obedient society to allow them to do what they wish. Just because they wear a nice suit doesn't mean that they're good people, folks. I think this is important to understand. Anyone can hide behind a smile. If you're watching this video right now and you're not on the side of the people, then whose side are you on? Tyranny? There is only one side to be on, folks, and that's on the side of the people. Let's not forget that these political parasites are supposed to be working for the people not for themselves. So what are they trying to hide by redacting important information? So you mean to tell me that they want to charge you again for providing documents that they already have in hand? The people need to see exactly where their dollars are going and how much these lawyers are making off the people. 
No wonder we have so much homelessness going on out there. I'm guessing it's because there just isn't enough money to fill the greed and to fill the pockets of these empty suits. Keep watching, folks. Presto. Thank you. Um, I'm re disagree with what you said. I rebut with what you said. Uh, we already know what a rebuttal is. We we don't have to be reminded like like children. Every Sir, what are you rebutting? Hand. I'm speaking to the council. I'm not speaking to the lawyer who's there paid to give you advice. Is it my time yet? You're recognized, oh, but I'm again, recognized. it has thank to be in regards thank you. to. I, I know what a rebuttal is. Thank you. Um, I'm going to rebut the earlier comments that certain residents made, specifically Don Tar. I'm gonna rebut the whole, the whole entire statement. Point of order. Speaker so of order. The rebuttals in regards to a comment made during the oral petitions and uh, remarks part. I, I am, made. can you please stop wasting my time? He made those comments prior. Not to the chair, to the vice chair. He made those, those comments. During public comments. No, oh, those made, during. He, sorry. I'm sorry. He made those President, comments he, during public comments. Christo, he actually made those comments during. No, he those, did not. He made those comments. Can I finish? Can you can you redo my time? Sir, you're out of order. Please allow the vice president to speak. I'll allow her to speak. You're correct. Thank you. Um, he made those comments in the comments about the resolutions, not in the public portion. It was in the comments to the resolutions. Conspiracy to deprive a member of the uh, public of their right to speak about a rebuttal. You see it right now. Um, I am allowed to rebut the entire statement he made. You just want to waste my time, so I, I can't talk about my rebuttal. Instead, I'm arguing with you guys. What sense does that make? Council President, speakers what, out of order. What sense does that make? Point of order, sir. I'm going to ask you to sit down if you're not going to rebut. I'm, I'm going I, to I rebut the, the comments uh, Donald Tarr made in public comments, if you allow me to. Council President, speakers out of order. I am not out of order. At I, this time, I do find that you are being out of order. This is a warning. Please stay to a topic that you originally addressed. How much time do I have left, Marlena? And oral petitions. Let the record reflect that I have one minute left, and the council has still dis not allowed me to rebut a statement made in public comments. The record will show that. We'll even make a YouTube video about it, where he speaks in public comments, and it shows what a liar you are. May I speak about the rebuttal that I intended to speak on in the first place? The comments were made during the comments on resolutions, not during the oral petitions and remarks. They were made. Uh, were you keeping track of what everyone's saying when they were saying it? I find that hard to believe during the meeting. And then when I prove you wrong later, you're just going to say, oh, well. No, I'm telling you right now, he made them in public comments. Sir, the council president has already ruled on this. And even if someone made comments during resolutions, you're still allowed to rebut. It doesn't say in, in the uh, rebuttal that you cannot rebut something in, in the it public. has to be a proper rebuttal. This is not a proper rebuttal. That's what you say all the time. Nobody believes you, you anymore. Because you refuse to follow the Nobody rules. Nobody believes you anymore. Point of order, again. Rebuttal in regards to oral petition and remark comment. Is that As my President, comment? the speaker's time has elapsed. Thank you. No shit. Any other uh, second time speakers? First time speakers, just in case. Seeing none, motion to close the public portion. Motion to close, close the, public the public portion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Jersey Watcher brought up a good point in this here video. He talks about Daniel's Law. See, every time he goes up there to speak, they keep wanting him to say his name and address, and then they publish it on the website or on YouTube for everyone to see. That is an absolute violation of his Fourth Amendment right. And the reason Christo from Jersey Watcher keeps bringing up Daniel Law is to show the hypocrisy from the public servants. We're going to end the video with the clip regarding a judge whose son was murdered because someone found her address. And so in New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, they created what's called Daniel's Law. So if a cop goes up to speak during the portion of a public meeting, you mean to tell me that these hypocrites are willing to violate rights under Daniel's Law? If they're willing to write up and create laws, why are they not willing to follow them? They expect the people to follow them, but not them. This is exactly the problem in government, folks, and it's happening everywhere. 
One of the patterns I keep seeing is that law firms seem to be controlling this country. This is what happens when the people put all their trust in the servants and the servants allow themselves to be manipulated by law firms. The patterns don't lie. Obama was a lawyer. That's how he was able to sweet talk the masses, pass through the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, the Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, and the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act, just to name a few. Who's covering up for who here? Is the law firm covering up for Mayor Sam Joshi, or is Mayor Sam Joshi covering up for this law firm? Is this how bad politicians push out good people in government? When government violates the law, we pay for it. When we break the law, we get buried, folks. One more link that I'm going to add to the video description is Mayor Sam Joshi's Facebook page. I want you guys to let them know that we the people are paying attention and we're watching what they are doing. It's time to be transparent with the people, folks. I'm also going to drop Jersey Watchers channel link in the description and in the pinned comment. Make sure you guys go subscribe and binge watch his videos. And if you guys go into your city council meetings and you speak out and you have videos about it, let me know right away. Record police now at gmail.com. We want to help your channels grow. We want to help your community uncover corruption, put it in the spotlight so that people can demand answers. Enough is enough, folks. These politicians with the help from these law firms, have been getting away with too much for too long. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to my channel. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. My name is Esther Salas, and I'm a United States District Judge. As some of you might recall, two years ago, a disgruntled lawyer, a self-proclaimed anti-feminist and racist, set a course aimed at assassinating me. This man obtained my home address and other personal information off the Internet and used that information to stalk me and my family. On Sunday, July 19, 2020, this man walked up to my door, rang my doorbell, and killed my only child, Daniel, and almost killed my husband of 27 years. As Daniel's mom, shortly after my son's death, I decided that I couldn't let my son's death be in vain. Since Daniel's senseless murder, my husband Mark and I have made it our mission in life to try to save others from enduring this unfathomable pain. Protecting the lives of public servants from retaliatory threats and violence is critical if our public servants are to feel safe in their courtrooms, their offices, and their homes. Thanks to the New Jersey Legislature and Governor Murphy, we now have the protection of Daniel's Law. Daniel's Law prohibits the disclosure of residential addresses of certain covered persons on websites that are controlled by the state, county, and local government agencies. These covered persons can include active and retired judges, prosecutors, and members of the law enforcement community and their immediate family members who reside in the same household. To help carry out the work of protecting these individuals, the Office of Information Privacy was created within the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. The office has established a new online portal where all covered persons can now apply for redaction of their personal information. If you are one of the thousands of covered persons residing in New Jersey who qualify for this protection, or if you're not sure and you want to find out, please visit www.danielslaw.nj.gov. Not a single day goes by that I don't think about my Daniel. For Mark and me, there's nothing we can do to bring our Daniel back. However, if you're listening to this message, you have an option. Together, we can make a difference. Please visit the portal and do your part to ensure that you and your loved ones are safe.